another edition of the Josh Scanlon or the Heritage Wealth Planning YouTube channel with your host, Josh Scanlon. Today is going to be part two of our uh, analysis of the various mutual fund and investment firms and their online portfolio tools. Remember, yesterday we did the one with USAA, and we went into three different options that they had where we call self-directed, where you just put in some information, what we call risk tolerance questionnaire. The computer spits out a, a model portfolio for you based on those uh those questions that you answered, and then you go and do that yourself and, and uh, invest those funds yourself. The second one was a portfolio managed portfolio where the, the, the computer <laughs> spits out literally the same thing at USA, which is just odd, but yet they're going to charge a management fee. So I'm not quite, I guess, because they do it all for you. Um, I, I just, I don't think that was working the way it was intended, actually. So the computer, the self-directed one uh, should give you a point, a, a, a portfolio that you just take care of on your own. The second one is where they kind of do it for you and they do the rebalancing and all that. If it was the way it was intended, it was just all USA mutual funds. It was the exact same ones as the uh, self-directed one where they charge you a fee and the fee was not uh, was not conspicuous. I could not find what the fee was. I'm sure if you look real deep, you could find it, but uh, it, it left that left some something to be desired. The last one was a robo advisor, their digital investment advisor, which I liked of the three I like best because there's a fee in there. And again, I don't know what that was, um, but they use index funds, uh, iShares and particularly ETFs, ETFs, exchange traded funds. In this case, iShares, a couple of Vanguard. Uh, it is much, much more diversified. It's, I'm certain it's going to be cheaper than the other two programs that they had. So I was a fan of USA, the DIA, the Digital Investment Advisor of the uh, of the three, uh, for sure, uh, just because the USA self-directed one, the funds were not diversified very well. The fees were still pretty hefty. And then you have to do it yourself. The second option was the worst by far. I, I don't. I still don't see the benefit there. And the third one was the one I liked the best. So right now we're going to go to T. Rowe Price. Let's see what OT Road does for us because I'm, you know, again, another big firm. Now USA is in San Antonio. T Road Price is in Baltimore, and so I just went to uh, tRoadPrice.com, and I'm going to go over here to personal investing. Uh, real quick, the reason I like T Road USA, we're going to go with Fidelity, Schwab, Vanguard. The big five is what I call them because they're notorious for lower cost self-directed no low mutual funds now not that doesn't mean exclusively as i said they they have all kinds of options and offers now too but if you just want to invest your own money in these firms you can do it with with no commissions what's called no loads um and their funds are usually cheaper than the industry average maybe not extraordinarily cheaper but definitely cheaper on average so so they're they're all good firms for sure so here I went to T. Rowe Price. I just want to see what they offer for their portfolio recommendations. And I hit the planning and research button and I say advice. I want advice. And that's what you need to do. Anytime you have one of these websites, just click, maybe type in advice and see what pops up. Uh, you get these happy people fishing, you know, given that T. Rowe Price is in Baltimore. I imagine that's the Chesapeake Bay. So uh, good for them. And then it says, what kind of advice do you want? And it gives us four models um, similar to what USA did. I want invest, uh, experts to recommend a portfolio and make a decision on my behalf. Uh, you need $50,000 to invest per IRA. And it's basically, that's kind of what we're doing uh, with uh, with USA. You're going to say, look, I'm going to give you 50000 bucks. You tell me what to do and you implement it for me for a fee. And that looks similar to what they're doing here. Uh, the second option is I want uh, point in time investment advice and want to remain in control. So essentially similar to USA. You just plug and play. They spit out a portfolio for you, and then you go do it on your own. And uh, I don't think there's any fee there because USA didn't have one. I think they just say you have to have a minimum of thousand bucks. So you know, there you go. We'll use these two. Uh, these bottom two are more for uh, this is two hundred fifty thousand minimum, and this is three million minimum. And uh, right now, I'm just trying to focus on the fifty thousand. There's no reason right or wrong for that, but just right now, I want to kind of focus apples to apples to see what they spit out for portfolio recommendations. So we'll stay on these two guys here. So let's go over the first one that I did with USA, which is the uh, the point in time or what I call self-directed one. So we're gonna click on the investment allocation tool. We're gonna hit program details. Now this did make you have a sign up, even if you're not a client, you can still sign in as a guest to get a model portfolio, um, I think. So yeah, okay, it looks like so. Previous to this is I had to actually register as a guest to sign into their model here. So let's uh, let's see what they ask us. And you can you know create anything you want. But uh, 
see how it works. Answer a brief series of questions about your investing preferences and objectives, blah, blah, blah. So that's going to be their risk tolerance thing. So let's hit get started. Let's see how long this takes. I'm going to say I'm 47 years old because that's what I am. Uh, 47. I uh, say this is a retirement goal. Looks like they already got that checked. I'm going to say 50,000 bucks is what we're going to put in there. Um, I want a recommendation for a mutual. Okay, so I want a recommendation for a single mutual fund based on my age. No, I don't want that. I want a recommendation for, no, I don't want a single. I want a recommendation for a portfolio of mutual funds that aligns with my risk tolerance and time horizon and has set has a set of funds that remain the same over time. This says, I want a recommendation for a single mutual fund that aligns with my risk tolerance and time horizon and has a mix of stocks and bonds that remain the same over, over the time. Um, that, that, I don't know what that is. Um, I want a recommendation for a single mutual fund based on my age that is going to be more conservative over time. So this is going to be a target retirement fund here. This is just going to be an asset allocation fund right here. So it's going to say, you know, the USAA or T. Rowe Price balance fund, 60% stocks, 40% bonds. It doesn't ever change. It's going to be a target retirement fund. So you'll be 60% stocks, 40% bonds today. Five years from now, it'll be 55, 45. Five years after that, it'll be 50, 50, and so on, so on. I don't want that. I want this right here. So this will be a group of funds. And we'll say I need this money in, what, uh, 15 years. We'll just say 15 years, which would make me a long-term investor. All right, so let's see what we get here. Um, I need this money to last, we'll say, 30 years, okay? Uh, risk is a part of investing. In the past, how did you react when investment lost money? I just held on to my investment, we'll say. They already pre-checked that. <laughs> Uh, if a portfolio gained or lost 15 to 20 percent of its value in six months, how would you adjust your portfolio? I would not make any changes. Crack how. And remember, USA asked almost identical the same questions. I agree to I guess I'm signing up for the Marine Corps. So who knows? All right. So uh, prospectuses for funds. Yeah, don't need that. Not oh, to tell us get investment I'm for. OK. OK. Prospectuses. I got all that. Okay. Please scroll to the end of the key points and activate. I agree. Please scroll to the end of the key points. Oh, right here. Wow, that's a. Okay, there we go. So you got, you got to scroll down to this right here. I'm surprised I don't have a big button right there. That says scroll down. Okay, but you can figure it out. But again, you want this to be uh, as as easy as pie. All right. So they're saying we should go here. Um, the equity 70 portfolio includes six different T. Rowe Price mutual funds. Again, I have 50,000 bucks. They're giving me global bond, U.S. investment grade bonds. So 70% and 30% uh, bonds. I don't know any of these funds. Uh, value, large cap, small cap, international, mid cap. So they do have exposure to small and mid. Remember, USA had no exposure to small caps. That was, uh, I, I felt that left a lot to be desired. 21% of my 70% in the equities will be in international, which, which I'm, I'm fond of, actually. So what is that total? That's going to be about 15% of my overall portfolio. 14% of my overall portfolio will be international. 30% uh, will be in bonds. Uh, what's that? You know, 38%. Let's bear me just a second. 0.7 times 0.38. 26, 27 percent will be in large cap U.S. stocks, 0.11 times 0.7. 8 percent will be in uh, small to mid, and what I say here, 0.21 times 0.7, and 15 percent will be international. So I don't know if this has any. Um, let's see, if this has any emerging markets or not. But a couple of things that jump out at me. One is they only had a little bit in small mid. It's still more than USA did, but USA did have emerging markets specifically in this one. Let's see, this is the only international fund that they have. And I just wonder the composition. Let's see if, it's, if it has any emerging markets or if it's just all developed uh, international companies. You know, they, you know, uh, okay, so they got Europe, Pacific, Japan, so a little bit in, in emerging markets, not much. So this is a developed uh, international fund. Let's just see what the fees are on this guy real quick, because we looked at the USA Emerging Markets Fund. That was pretty high. Um, 
expenses. The expenses right here is what we want. So remember on these accounts, you're not paying an actual fee for investment management. You're paying a fee to the mutual fund. So you have an expense ratio. Yeah. 0 0.94. That's pretty cheap for a, uh, an international fund 0.94 and, and T row price is, is pretty low. I mean, they're pretty good for sure. I do want to see this one right here, mid to small cap. I want to see how much is small and how much is mid. If it'll break that down, charts currently unavailable. So let's look at composition here. Only well, got 59 million in assets. What's that about? So that is <laughs> yeah, only has 59 million in assets. Now, see, I don't, that's, I don't know. That's, uh, that's interesting. That, that tells me it's a pretty new fund. And um, am I the guinea pig for the fund manager? I, I don't know. I'd have to, whoa. Okay, net exp no. what's that about? Gross expense ratio, 2.6, but the net is 0.8. So they're giving us, eh, that uh, that doesn't make me, that's odd. Uh, now you got a 1% redemption fee probably after 30 days, I imagine. Um, what's, what's that about? So the difference between the gross and the net is significant. And the waiver type's contractual. Does that mean it'll be there? Or the uh, redemption fees for 90 days? Okay. Uh, in of itself, that doesn't bother me too much on the redemption fee because you should hold it anyway. That doesn't, actually doesn't bother me at all. Uh, that... The gross expense ratio in the net, that big differential is uh, is interesting to me. I, I, I have yet to see anything that drastic, actually. Um, I have to look at management here because it's such a new fund. It tells me that they might have a new uh, PM, a portfolio manager. And if this guy's some fresh race kid right at Harvard, I don't want to manage funds since 2017. But he's been with T. Rowe Price since 2000. So this, uh, this person... Um, has been around for a while, so that's good. He's only been the fund manager since 2017. My inclination on this fund, my friends, is that this is a new fund that they're giving to these folks, uh, Sudhir, Prashant, and Vinit, uh, to run. Um, I, I bet that's uh, what's going on here. They've been with the firm for quite some time. I mean, he's been almost 20 years, or she, I, I'm not sure. This person's been with them for 12 years. This person's been with them for eight. So they've been with the firm for quite a while, probably as an analyst. And I bet they're probably getting their first shot at running a fund. So this is a new fund. I could let's, actually, I don't know that, but let's see. I bet it is. I bet it just started in June of 2017, and they're trying to get money into it. Let's see, because only got 59 million in there. Um, it has no performance record. So basically, uh, Inception. Let's go to Inception. See if that tells us anything. Um, That's not really, no, it says 2016. So I, I don't know when this fund, I'm not sure we could find it in here someplace. I do not, but it's been around 2016, 17. So it's a couple years old, only got 59 million. Yeah, that that, uh, that is a concern of mine, I'm not going to lie. And the only reason that's a concern of mine, my friends, is because I don't want a new fund. Um, there are pros and cons about getting a new fund. Generally speaking, new funds are more nimble than older funds. That's just a fact. In fact, if you ask anybody, the larger the fund, the more restrictions they are because they got to move so much money. So a new fund has more nimble, can see things and adjust quickly. Um, a couple of things just jumped on there. The difference between the gross expense and the net, that's a pretty significant drastic change. But um, it didn't really tell me much in terms of their exposure, small and mid versus what. So if only 8% of the portfolio is in small and mid, and let's just say it's four and four, um, that's 4% small, 4% mid in a, in a $50,000 portfolio. And that's not much. I'd, I'd probably want to see a little bit more, but I actually like this better than USA one. That's that's just a fact. Um, and I'm not going to look at each of the, every of these funds. So um, I'm, this one I like, actually. This seems to work pretty good, relatively speaking, to what we had at USA for the uh, the point and click, and you do it on your own portfolio. And the, there's no fees. I mean, the fees are in the fund expenses itself. I imagine T. Rowe Price probably net yeah, 0.8 probably on whole would be their average fee. Um, I don't know that for sure, but I imagine it's probably about 0.8. And USA is a little bit higher. I like the T. Rowe Price one better. But let's see about the uh, actual the, their version of their digital advisor thing, where they're going to give you a active approach of portfolio management, and you're going to pay a fee. Now, in this case, I already looked this up. The T. Rowe Price fee is in their funds. There's no external fee on top of it. You're just paying whatever the mutual fund fee is, and they're going to manage it for you, which I actually think is pretty, uh, uh, pretty exactly pretty convenient. Um, my presumption is they rebalance it for you. 
annual check-in and ongoing insights, no additional advisory fees, no commissions. You pay the expense of the underlying portfolio, which I like. Um, active investment research. Well, let's just see what they come up with here. So let me drink a drink of water. Let's see what they say. Actually, my wife just texted me, so let me just to tell her that I can meet her. Yes. Okay. That's professional. Isn't it? All right. So same thing. I'm 47 years old. My minimum initial investment of 50,000 bucks. All right. Let's see what they got here. I'm just going to say rollover IRA. I don't, I don't, that'd be interesting to see what they say different between a Roth and a rollover. But uh, do you plan to spend this money in the account? No. I don't have any plans to spend it. I want growth. Yep. That's what I want. I want hardcore growth. <laughs> Um, risk of part investing. How did you handle react when investment loss value? I'm just saying I'm trying to make this apples to apples. If my portfolio gain or loss 15 to 20 percent, I would not make any changes. All right. And let's see what the recommendation is. Um, oh, so in this case, I think I did everything the same I did the other one, but they're saying 87 percent in equity is only 12 and a half in fixed income. So I, I like that uh, better. Um, Wow. Look at, okay. So that's a lot of funds. Um, that's a lot of funds. Uh, sometimes you can be overly diversified. I, you know, here they got emerging markets. Um, but I don't have to do this. I think, I think they do it all for me. Uh, let's, does it say anything about, so my presumption, uh, for, for description. Yeah. Discre okay. So they do it all for you. So, you are getting active management. Let's. I'm just curious. We'll pick a uh, growth stock fund. Let's just see what the, the fees are on this. Um, management. And we're going to look at the expenses. The expenses on this guy. All oh, right here. That's where I want to go. Our, uh 0.68. So, I mean, I, I like this. I'm not going to lie to you. This one I like. It's uh, the fees are going to be lower. They're going to actively manage it for you in terms of discretionary approach. So they're taking it over for you. They're doing it. You don't have to do anything. Um, sometimes with discretionary portfolio management, there could be more taxable consequence. But because this is an IRA, it doesn't matter. Um, I like it. It's more aggressive than the other account. Uh, the fees are the T. Rowe Price mutual fund fees, discretionary. They do everything. Uh, you're not getting any index funds, but you get T. Rowe Price got some good funds and their fees aren't extraordinarily high. I mean, they are higher than an index fund. And presumably that could be a little bit of a, of a headwind, but um, no, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of what they're doing here. This this is, a, I like this. So let's, I'm going to see if I can't go back. I want to go back to see if we can do a Roth IRA instead. I just want to see if there's any difference. Um, I wonder if there would be any difference, actually. I'll right, see if I can go back. Hold on just a second, my friends. Yeah, I'll see a Roth. I imagine it's going to be the same thing. Let's see, though, because now the reason I want to do a Roth differently is because Roth should be more aggressive because you're getting the upside growth. You don't want bonds, my friends, in a Roth. That, I mean, unless you're real, real worried, you just don't want bonds in a Roth. Um, a Roth should take advantage of the tax-free nature of what the Roth IRA is. Growth and growth and growth. Get as much growth as you can out of that pub because you never pay tax on it again. If you die and you leave her to wife, she never pays tax on it again, and neither of you have required distributions. So that means that thing can sit there for a long, long, long time, accumulating tax-free returns, accumulating. You leave it to your kids after your wife dies, now, they do have to take required distributions from it, but it's still tax-free. So you're talking decades upon decades of tax-free of tax growth. So uh, so bonds don't give you decades and decades of tax-free growth. They give you decades and decades of interest. Interest, and yeah, so it's the same thing here. Okay, so interest versus tax-free growth. Remember, tax-free growth, compounding growth. Interest doesn't compound. Interest, you got $100,000 in a CD, pays you 4% of your interest. You get 4000 4,000, 4,000, 4,000. Now, I guess you could say it's compounding if you let the interest reinvest. A lot of brokerage CDs don't. They just take the cash and put it over here. But it, whatever. At the end of the day, 4% versus 8% over you know, decades is a significant difference. And that's why we don't really want bonds in our Roth IRA. We want bonds in our traditional IRA 
not our Roth IRA. And we do not want bonds in a, uh, in a at least tax exempt bonds in a taxable account. We'll, we'll, I'll get into that in different episodes. But just remember, Roth should be stocks, 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 stocks. Your bonds should go in your traditional IRA. And then your uh, low, uh, high growth, low tax stuff, small caps should be things like that. Small caps should be in your non tax, your taxable account, your non qualified account. So dividend heavy stocks, large cap stocks, stocks that pay dividends and stuff like that. And your Roth, your bonds should be in your traditional and your small, your high growth oriented stuff that pays no dividends and not much capital gains should be in your non qualified, your non IRA account, what's called a taxable account. And again, I'll get into that in a different episode. That's uh, called asset location. It's critical, critical. I'm telling you right now. All right. So it's the same thing. So I actually like what T Row Price is doing here. I'm, I think this is a pretty good plan. And uh, I, I, of the, Let's see, that's a five we've looked at now. This is my favorite by far. So let's go back to tbrooprice.com. Just while I'm here, I might take a gander at their uh, at the thing for $250,000 or more. Um, if it will let us get there. So the, uh, the the ones that we chose, I think this one's the best. I do like the USA one, um, the Digital Investment Advisor, which is similar to this. The USA Digital Investment Advisor is probably using index funds. I think the fee on that's probably about one half one percent. Don't quote me on that. But if factoring the index funds plus uh, the ETFs that they're using plus the fee that they charge, you're probably looking at sixty five basis points, or basically two thirds of one percent, a point six five percent. The T row price is probably a little bit higher than that, maybe point eight. Um, the T row price is discretionary, so the portfolio managers have a little bit more say in maneuvering stuff in the USA uh, digital best advisor only had a couple of index funds. So there wasn't really much to move around. Um, of the two, I'd probably go to USA, just get more familiar with the firm. And I've been a member for 40 years of the digital investment advisor of, of all of them. I'd probably start with USA. Um, the second one would be this one with T-Row price for sure. There's no act. There's no fee. I don't have to do anything. The fee is internal in the mutual funds. So there's no billing. I mean, yeah, you're paying something, but T-Row price is not, um, they're, their fees are reasonable. Let's put it that way. So I want to try one other thing here. Just tell me advice. Yeah, I'm going to go to advice. Oops, that's not where I want to go. I want to go here, personal investing, and see the uh, – yeah, let's go back. Uh, that's financial advisors. If you're using their funds, you can log in here and uh, – there we go, personal Want so let's give this a shot here. I do want to look at the two hundred fifty thousand or more one. Um, all right, so let's learn more. Let's see, is that one? where to go? Let's see, did I, did I miss it? Oh, right there. Planning and research. That's what we want. Advice. Okay, so let's go here and uh, see what we come up with here, my friends. Okay, this is what we're looking at. We there's yeah. Okay. So I'm just curious what the advisory planning service is. Man, I just wish they'd say the fees on these things. I mean, ah, drives me up the wall. I mean, how do you know what you're... Yeah. Um, is anybody... Second time I've looked at this and I don't see anything that says fee. Yeah, so uh, here's your FAQs. Can I include my spouse to service taking account of assets? How long does it get started? Yeah, so they don't. All right, let's see. When should I contact T. Rowe Price to review my stuff? Contact us anytime to discuss important changes that may affect your financial situation. Um, as an advisory planning service client, you receive support to help you adjust your investment and planning strategies based on your evolving needs. See, I, I mean, I don't like this. So complimentary checkups, well, it's not complimentary because you're paying a fee. So inherently the complimentary insinuates it's free. Um, available online, unless you see it in a seat. I don't like that. So I don't want to have to call T. Rowe Price. I want them to call me and USA and Vanguard on this. Is my problem with these big guys uh, offering these planning services. I hate to say it, but these guys, I hope they're calling and they've documented that they're calling you because if you're not, let's just say it costs 1%, literally I have no idea what the fee is. That's 2,500 bucks a year. 
on top of whatever the mutual funds are that's in the portfolio. So let's just say it's another 1%. Again, I don't know. So 1% plus 1%, that's 2% that's two on a $250,000 portfolio. That means it's cost you $5,000 a year. Well, if it's just sitting there and you're not getting any advice on it, what is that you're paying for precisely? Um, you should, you're should you paying for not getting advice. We call that reverse churning. That means you're they're paying a fee, but you're not receiving any value for it. Um, in fact, what T. Rowe Price and all these other firms they should do is they say, if you find out that you're going to be sitting in that account, and not actively engaged at least once a year, and once a year is not enough, but let's just say once a year, we need to put you in a lower cost account because that just tells me you're setting and forgetting, which is absolutely the best investment strategy you should do, bar none, which is why I like index funds. But at the end of the day, if you're put in this portfolio for whatever reason you are, and you're not having a conversation at least once a year to review everything, you're paying for advice that you're not receiving. And that might be because you, you chose that. Well, that's fine. But you can cho choose it for a whole lot less expensive in the portfolio thing I just showed you, uh, where you put it in that account, they manage it for you, and the only fee is in the internal mutual funds. So I, I just I don't like that you need to call them. They should be needing to call you, and they might, and they might have that set up uh, that they reach out to you. I know USA, we did. They'd have a team that would call once a year just to get you an account or Unfortunately, if they miss you, they'll leave a voicemail. And if you never call back, that never got done. And I yeah, I just don't like that. Presumably, T. Rowe Price has a team that reaches out to everybody in these programs just to make sure you get on the calendar. But um, yeah, I, I, of, the, of the three, I like the second one best of the T. Rowe Price models for sure. I actually like that second model um, of the three. So between the six that we've looked at, the two from USA, the three from USA, the three from T. Rowe Price, uh, I, I like the Digital Investment Advisor Best from USA and the T. Rowe Price, I think it's Active Plus Portfolio uh, that they offer here. So those are my two favorite. All right, so next time will you look at Vanguard, you can see I got the Vanguard thing right there, and uh, we'll see what they look at. And, and I'm interested to see that because it's been a long time since I actually looked over Vanguard for individual investors. I, I look at their stuff for financial advisors because they get a lot of great white papers and research, but I haven't looked at anything for an individual investor. So we'll look at that next time. Um, and don't forget, thumbs up. If you have any comments or anything you want me to look at, let me know. And as always, don't forget to hit subscribe right down there. Hit the notification bell to be notified of future content. And we'll look forward to seeing you next time on the Heritage Wealth Planning YouTube channel. Thanks, guys.